we're all contaminated. We made baby bottles with it. We made their formula. Like that's what we did. When I take a shower, I am showering in contaminated water, that we are bathing and cooking and cleaning in contaminated water. All of these North Carolinians are talking about the toxic chemicals found in their water. Now that water coming out right there is contaminated. I don't think people realize how screwed up this situation is. I'm tired of, to be honest, watching friends fight cancer. You shouldn't have to worry that your water at your home is making your family sick, that it's unacceptable. The chemicals were dumped into their water supply by a plant in North Carolina. Chemistry powers today. Good thing it's Teflon. At Comores, we care. Owned by Comores, a subsidiary of DuPont. It infuriated all of us to learn that Comores had been dumping this chemical compound into our Cape Fear River uh, for decades. Cape Fear provides drinking water for hundreds of thousands of North Carolinians in the southeastern part of the state. We should not have to live this way. And it's all because of them and what they've done. I thought it was paradise. I can run from my house to the beach and it's great. Marathon runner Beth Klein Marcosino, her husband and daughter moved from Michigan to North Carolina to live by the water and grow their family. Beth had just completed back-to-back -back races. I took a, like a little break from, you know, to give my body a break and stuff and we got pregnant, you know? And we weren't planning on it, but we were really happy. A son they would name Samuel. Here's her daughter announcing the big news. This is all, this is all I have of um, Samuel. That's what's in here. Yes, this is blanket. Just lots of clothes that we bought. Because we thought I'd be taking home a baby and not losing one. A son they'd only get to meet for a few moments. And we had like a proper funeral for him. You know, all my cousins, aunts and uncles, you would have thought Samuel like lived to 90. We came home and then started, you know, to heal and stuff and then that's when found out about Gen X in our water. And right away, I just thought, could this have caused the problems with my son, the problems with me? Good morning, everyone. Welcome. I appreciate you all being here. Why is Gen X being discharged into the river? It's like every few days we're hearing about more Gen X. In 2017, the world learned toxic chemicals and byproducts had been dumped in the Cape Fear River. The water supply for Beth and hundreds of thousands of others in Wilmington and surrounding areas was contaminated with these chemicals. The chemicals are part of a class of compounds known as PFAS, dangerous man-made toxins called forever chemicals because they never break down and build up in our bodies and the environment. Forever chemicals have been linked to negative health problems, including cancer, liver damage, and birth defects. Scientist Jamie DeWitt has been studying forever chemicals like PFAS and PFOA since 2005. Well, we know that exposure to PFOA through drinking water especially has been linked to many different human health problems. Linkages for testicular and kidney cancer, suppression of vaccine antibody responses, elevations in cholesterol in the blood, and problems with pregnancy and development. I mean, what kind of keeps you up at night when you, when you think about people just drinking this? I think about effects of PFAS exposure on 
babies and children and adolescents because they're not fully formed. And then like, got your good old pregnancy book that says nothing about PFOS in here. And then we soon found out that Samuel didn't develop his kidneys, bladder, or bowels, and I have placenta problems. Beth Marcasino is- Beth was part of a 2017 NC State study which found higher than normal levels of PFAS in 97% of participants. I found out that I had really high levels of multiple PFAS in my blood. She has no proof it caused Samuel's death. I will never know the exact levels that Samuel had, but if I had it in my blood, then he had to have it too. And I did Beth has been trying to get answers for years. And I lost my son and I did drink the water. She spoke at the very first news conference about Gen X in 2017. I don't think you should advise them to drink this water. Because well, I drank that water while I was pregnant. She's part of a class action lawsuit against Comores, and she created the nonprofit North Carolina Stop Gen X in Our Water. Every day I have people message me and call me and they're wondering the same thing. Is the water I'm drinking toxic? Is it causing me or my children to be sick? PFAS was created in the 1940s. It became popular in the 1960s when DuPont's non-stick cookware made Teflon a household name. Well, good thing it's Teflon. Now it's in everything from makeup to waterproof clothing to fast food wrappers. One of the leading manufacturers of these forever chemicals is here in North Carolina, outside of Fayetteville on the Cape Fear River. DuPont started making PFAS in Fayetteville in 1980. Later, they introduced a new forever chemical called Gen X. DuPont spun off its PFAS division into a company named Comores in 2015. But in the process of manufacturing the chemical, they were discharging it directly into the Cape Fear River and they were emitting it in the air and in the air it could go for miles and then when it lands on the ground, it could fall into folks drinking water wells. Tests show forever chemicals have seeped into at least 7,000 wells across an area spanning 800 square miles surrounding the Fayetteville plant. They found 16 different chemicals in my well. Mike Waters lives near the plant in Fayetteville in a community called Gray's Creek. He talked to us after surviving a massive heart attack. These are actually tomatoes, green peppers, um, some hot sweet peppers. He's also been fighting a rare form of leukemia. You know, I make a, I make a joke, 23 years in Special Forces, an enemy couldn't kill me. This is what feeds the water to the house. But you know what, my water here will. Now, he's on the front lines of this crisis. I actually literally care about my neighbors. I'm fighting hard for the community. Recruiting neighbors like Jamie White. She's lived in Grace Creek since 2008. Comores is legally required to provide bottled water to people with contaminated wells. We go through probably 10 bottles of water a day, these gallon-sized jugs. We're soaked every day trying to lift and juggle and move because as you can see how full these are. Jamie gets 30 bottles of water delivered to her home every two weeks to drink and cook with. Y'all, you actually don't even realize how much water you use. She always runs out. What is this going to do to my kids? The chemicals, what are they doing to the kids? It's a fear shared by everyone. WRAL environmental reporter Liz McLaughlin and I interviewed at Jamie White's house one afternoon. All have contaminated water and all wanted to share what life has been like. I think it's disgusting. It's like heartbreaking. It can't kill me, it's not harming the people. My doctors in Duke actually told me if I drank out the tap, it would make my cancer worse than what it is right now. Go, go, go. Carrie Atkins has thyroid cancer that has spread to her lungs and liver. She and her animals live in a trailer a few miles from Jamie. Yeah. A 2023 study shows elevated PFAS in the blood of dogs and horses tested in Grace Creek. My dog has cancer. 
He's literally fighting for his life right now. She can't afford to pick up and leave. Like, I want to move, but I can't move. I'm stuck in this hellhole. Oh, that means. And the only thing that goes through my mind is, well, well, my fur babies and I die together because we're all battling. She's closer to me than my actual sister is. And to watch her go through all this with her health oh, and her dogs, oh, it breaks my heart and yeah. it scares me. And I refuse to even run my water. Brittany Tripp lives next to Carrie. Her son has autoimmune issues. Am I going to turn out like Carrie and have cancer? Is my son going to develop cancer from this? It's a mother's worst nightmare thinking about this with children. This is so beyond just giving us a, a bottle of water. Kelly Arthur and her family moved to Grace Creek in 1997. Our daughter um, at the age of 20 was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Our neighbor across the street from us was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. All of their wells had Gen X. And I just don't think that that's a coincidence. And while many get bottled water to drink, and some have gotten filters installed and paid for by Comores. And the way it works, the water comes in here, it goes through a sediment filter. Thousands still have to use contaminated water every day. What we're bathing in, what we're showering, what we're watering our gardens, that is, we're still using the contaminated water. I've lost friends, like I say, many friends from cancer, couples. Explain to their families, explain to their grandkids why they're not here. So Vicki Mullen's own grandchildren live with her. How do you tell a five-year-old he can't take a bath? Because they tell you not to sit in the water. You can shower in it, but you cannot, you know, you can't take a bath in it. This is our life right here. This is crazy. She's sick of living with bottled water and fighting for clean water. I feel like they're waiting on us to die. Oh, they'll, they'll stop, they're gonna die, so it, it doesn't matter. No, I'm going down fighting, and I'm not giving up. Coming up. They went from one small town to another small town. They had to know the truth because we know what happened up in West Virginia. They know. This was kind of like part two in a, in a horror tale. DuPont had been making PFOA, including a forever chemical called C8 in West Virginia since the 1950s. Internal memos from the 1980s show DuPont knew about possible birth defects in babies born to women working in the Teflon department. I never saw nothing like this in my life. In the 90s, a farmer sued DuPont after the company bought his land to dump materials and hundreds of his cows died. In 2001, his attorney filed a class action lawsuit on behalf of 50,000 people in the Ohio River area when they learned DuPont had been contaminating their water. The moment the news broke in Parkersburg, West Virginia, 20 years ago, should have been the moment that everyone started looking at where is this happening elsewhere in the country and let's make sure we stop it now. Permits show DuPont was producing Teflon at the Fayetteville plant since at least 2006, then later Gen X. Gen X was supposed to be a safer alternative. But DuPont's own lab studies showed the replacement caused liver and kidney problems and cancerous tumors in rats. In 2017, reporter Vaughn Haggerty uncovered Gen X was found in the Cape Fear River. I couldn't believe this was going on. Camores, which was spun off from DuPont in 2015, has never denied the dumping. They told local officials that this stuff had been in the water since for almost 40 years. Camores said it did not violate any laws because Gen X was not listed as a pollutant by the EPA, meaning the company was in compliance with its state discharge permit. Neither Comores nor DuPont ever admitted wrongdoing, even after paying more than $670 million 
to settle thousands of lawsuits in Ohio and West Virginia. It's there, contaminant. Emily Donovan, a mom in Wilmington, co-founded the group Clean Cape Fear. The subcommittee will come to order. She's fought for Camores to pay for cleanup. Today I'd like to speak to you as a mother who has spent the last two years getting a crash course in biochemistry. Friends who fought alongside her got sick. It's not fair. It's not fair that's happened. Emily's neighbor, Amy Shands, was diagnosed with a rare cancer affecting the head and neck. Her husband, Jonathan, said things got bad fast. 90% of those diagnosed are still alive five years later. She didn't last two years. Something had to accelerate that. Tests show PFAS from the Fayetteville site in their water and Amy's blood. If they're the one that put the, put the, the chemicals in the water, and that's what caused my wife to lose time on her life and lose the time to be with her daughter, they should be at fault for it. Clean Cape Fear member Tom Kennedy traveled to Washington, D.C. to show lawmakers what a dad fighting to live looked like. He really wanted to make sure that his face and the girls' faces were seen. He died of male breast cancer in 2022, leaving behind his wife, Christine, and their two daughters. I want you to look at my family and understand that my family could be your family. These families admit they can't prove forever chemicals directly caused their loved ones to get sick. While multiple studies from the National Cancer Institute and Centers for Disease Control link PFAS to increased cancer risk, that doesn't prove causation. A Comores spokesperson pointed to two studies that show rates for some cancers were not significantly higher in the counties impacted by Gen X contamination from 2011 to 2015. However, the agency behind one of those studies, NCDHHS, said in some counties, some cancer rates, including testicular and liver cancers, were significantly higher than the state rate. An agency spokesperson said a comprehensive research study is needed. We don't know, but we deserve to know. We brought these concerns to the head of the Environmental Protection Agency, Michael Regan. They absolutely deserve to know what is causing or what has caused or potentially caused any of these illnesses. Regan used to be in charge of the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality. In 2019, a settlement between DEQ and Comores resulted in a consent order requiring Comores to stop polluting PFAS into the air and water surrounding the plants. Comores must also sample wells, provide bottled water, or if the levels of PFAS are high enough, provide filters. In Grays Creek, Jamie White just got her filter installed, but said it took fighting with Comores for five years. A very long five years of tears and fighting and yelling through the phone because they don't want to listen and they didn't want to do their part. Jamie's next door neighbors, the Grimes family, just moved in. They don't have a filter, so Kelly Grimes bathes her newborn in the sink using the bottled water Camores sends. I won't bathe him in the water. I won't let him have contact with it. I don't clean his toys off with the water. Do you regret buying the house? Um, I regret buying it because I know that there are issues that are gonna come. I have four other children that are bathing and showering in the Kimmore's water. Kimmore's is not required to provide water or filters to people in Wilmington. So I guess the people that can't afford it, we should just all drink the water and hopefully not die. And the company does not have to pay to remove PFAS from the Cape Fear River. That cost falls on the customer. Vaughn Haggerty went from reporter who broke the Gen X story. So this is the facility. To director of communications at the Cape Fear Public Utility Authority. The utility authority spent $43 million on filters to remove PFAS from the water. So these were designed to specifically do what? These were designed specifically to remove Camor's PFAS. The filters are working, but Camor's didn't pay for it. They were the ones who poisoned the water, not us, so they should have to clean it up. 
North Carolina Attorney General Josh Stein has filed lawsuits against DuPont and Comores. Now, they engage in these sales and changing who owns what. It's all malarkey. It's all nonsense. It's all about avoiding responsibility. In March of 2023, Michael Regan's EPA proposed the first ever drinking water standard to establish legally enforceable levels of six PFAS chemicals to near zero, including two original Teflon chemicals. But there are more than 9,000 chemicals in this class, and one tweak of the compound means a whole new forever chemical to be researched and potentially regulated. Yes, we've started uh, with six, uh, six of the most dangerous that we are aware of. These companies who will undeniably litigate against our standards, we want to be sure that they can stand up in court. Camores sued the EPA in 2022 for setting a health advisory for Gen X, claiming the agency failed to use the best science when making its determination. Residents worry the company will fight the drinking water standard too. They still swear that this stuff is safe and that we're all crazy. Good neighbors care. At Camores, we care. Next. Kim Morris is not a good neighbor. If I had a neighbor like that, I'd say, please move. Comores has a great PR team. Good neighbors care. At Comores, we care. North Carolina is our home. Our quality of life and environment must be protected. The good neighbor campaign is absolutely insulting. They are not a good neighbor. Our goal, a 99% reduction by 2030. The Comores commercials never mention its contaminants from the Fayetteville Works facility they are trying to eliminate. You did bad. You poisoned us. And now you're trying to get like applauded for making efforts to fix what you did. As part of the 2019 consent order, Comores started filtering PFAS from its wastewater and installed a $100 million thermal oxidizer to stop emitting PFAS into the air. They had installed one in Parkersburg, West Virginia decades ago. Why did they wait until they were forced by a court order to install it here in Fayetteville, North Carolina? They were saving money at our expense. The new Comores barrier wall is under construction. The company was also required to build a barrier wall to contain the pollution seeping out below the plant. And it's just a joke because it's already in there. This wall isn't going to save us. In June 2023, Comores completed the barrier wall after missing the state-imposed deadline twice. In 2022, Comores announced plans to expand production in Fayetteville after paying more than $300,000 in fines to the state for environmental violations. So. You know, all of us around the plant already realize that expansion, it's going to happen. Doesn't matter how hard we scream. Comores says the expansion won't increase PFAS emissions. I don't really see many answers that talk about the science in detail or that really show the degree of empathy that, that should be shown. It says I'm the big sister. My daughter never got to wear it. Scientist Jamie DeWitt, who has met Beth Klein Marcosino through her research, said she's doing the work for babies like Samuel. Beth, I think, experienced a, a life-changing event through the loss of her child. She lives in an area where we know PFAS contamination has existed at high levels for many years, maybe even decades. And I'm doing the best job that I can do as a scientist to try to get more information on the scientific level to help decision makers move forward so that what happened to you doesn't happen to anybody else. I don't want the loss of my son to go like for him to just, you know, die in vain. And because I know there's just so many other people that are, they're hurting and don't know why.